Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May his love and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, we are continuing in our series, What is Worship? And, and taking a closer look as into why we do what we do and why we worship the way we worship in order to more effectively communicate with those who are joining us in our worship experience and also understanding how God has come to be with us. My dear friend, in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, we receive an invitation from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And around the 28th verse, 28 through 30, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, for my burden is easy, and my yoke is light. We can allow this to be rhetorical. Anybody heavy laden? Anybody got some burdens? I don't know, was your week anywhere close to as stressful as mine? Have you ever felt like Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19 and you feel like Jezebel is out to kill you and you just want to run somewhere, sit down and escape the craziness? and hear a word from God. And we want God to show up and answer us because we are fearful for our lives. People are trying to kill us. The world is out to attack us. And I am about to snap. Where can I go? And then we find ourselves in Psalm 46 and hear God tell us, I am your refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. And then you start listening to the world fall around you. Oh, in about verse 10, he says to you, be still and know that I am God. And so you come to his service this morning quietly, but full of chaos and confusion, wanting to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we discussed all of that last week and we left off confessing our sins before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so now today, we consider the absolution, the announcement of the forgiveness of sin to the penitent sinner. Jesus breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. John chapter 20, verses 22 through 23. And so we come to receive the forgiveness of sin. Last week we talked about the sacraments that we hold near and dear as a church. Do we remember? Ooh, good thing we're recapping. <laughs> Baptism and communion. And we said that there was a possible third clue we're talking about it right now anybody remember you can cheat it's on the screen absolution where we have the word of God promising us the forgiveness of sin attached to a visible element in baptism his word is attached to the water in communion it is attached to the bread and the wine and here's where we get a little Scary. So we'll break this down and we'll slow it down and pump our brakes so we can understand. Absolution. The word of God giving you the forgiveness of sin attached to the visible element, which would be the pastor. Whew. That sinner just like me. So let's talk for a moment. Why does your pastor have on this dress? He likes to sweat. Now, I, I think that's dress or no dress. That just happens. <laughs> but to cover the sinner that is before you, reminding you that it is the word of God that is coming to speak to you so that you're not focused on whether or not I got on gray pants and gray argyle socks and does my tie match? If the tie matches, you got to talk to Sugar because I'm colorblind. So you, we'll leave that in her department. 
Why does he have on this stole? Because he is yoked with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And dear friend, this is the heaviest piece of fabric ever. At the day of my ordination, and Pastor Delkey stood over me, and he was ordaining me, and he dropped that cloth over my shoulders. It was as if they broke for the weight of the world. How awesome a task to communicate to God's children the forgiveness of sin. And then we hear Paul explain to us in Ephesians chapter 6, to gird yourself with the belt of truth. And so God, in so many ways, is saying to you, shh, shh, even if he's boring you to death, as I shared with you last week, I am still reminding you that this is my service and has absolutely nothing to do with that sinner of a pastor and everything to do with me coming to you to communicate your forgiveness of sins so that you can be comforted in the darkness of your lives. And so as you are battling with all of that darkness, God's grace continues to come to you as you come crying. And he says, my child, your sins are forgiven. You have been set free. Our Lord declares through the mouth of his servant, the pastor, that by his grace and mercy, our sins are forgiven. The absolution speaks the gospel into our ears in a personal way. Through these gospel words, we receive the salvation earned by who? Christ. Earned by Christ, not by us. Sit down and hear God's grace for you. Upon the cross of Calvary, every sin is covered by his blessed death. And so as we come with our burdens and we think that we are such a terrible child, and God can't handle the pain that is within. Please understand, my dear friends, that that word right there, anybody see that? How many? How many? Every. Every sin is covered by the blood. There is no burden that you carry that is more powerful than the cross. Come to me, all you who are weary. And so you come in the darkness of your pain, in the chaos. And then you find yourself in Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus says to us, what you hear in the dark, speak in the daylight. Have you ever been in the dark? Have your sin ever left you in a very dark place? You know what happens when you're in the dark? You're quiet. Because you don't know what's about to jump out at you like the boogeyman. And so you want to shh, so you can know where to take your next step. And in the darkness of that which plagues you, God comes to you and speaks a word of healing and speaks a word of forgiveness. But, but see, we, we've confused church so that we believe it's something that we do and we want to come in and shout and do backflips and all of that and, and, and that's fine after you understand that you've been justified you can go ahead and act as sanctified as you please justification sanctification but when your heart is troubled please we're still in Matthew chapter 11 Jesus says what you hear whispered you then go shout from the rooftop. He wants to speak to you quietly. Remember we started by talking about Elijah? And Elijah had run from Jezebel because she was coming to attack him. And he wanted to hear from God. And, and, and we can relate to this. God, please show up. And we want him to have the tree fall over and the light shut out and all of this. Because then that way we'll know that God showed up. And so he says, Elijah, go stand out on the mountain and I'll come. And a powerful wind rips through the mountain. And you know what the verse says? And God was not there. And then an earthquake came. Surely that's God. The earth just shook. I see. 
and God was not there. Well, then there was a fire. Oh, clearly I've just seen from God and God was not there. But then in the gentle whisper, God spoke to Elijah. And you know what he said? Get up and go back and do the work of the kingdom. So dear friends, as you come here, sit and listen to the gentle whisper of God, restoring you, making you whole. Oh, I've shared this with you before. You do realize that this right here ain't the mission field. After you've been made whole, after you've been told that despite all of that chaos and confusion, you are still a loved child of God, what you heard in the whisper, go speak in the light. Your sins are forgiven. And so then we hear Almighty God in his mercy, we just said it, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So then we follow that with the service of the word. After the confession and absolution, the divine service continues with the service of the word. The purpose of the service of the word is to present Christ to the assembled congregation as the people prepare to meet him in his supper. The service is designed to lead you to his supper, to the place where he has said that he will meet you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood, which was shed for you How often, don't, they, don't raise your hand because I don't want everybody all up in your mix and then they know what kind of Kool-Aid you drank this morning. Excuse me. How often do you sin? Mm. Good thing you can't hear what's going on in my head. <clears throat> this do as often as you drink it for the forgiveness of sin. And so God is prepared to meet you at his supper to forgive you and set you free of that which has you imprisoned so that you can get up and go speak to those who were in the same darkness that you just came out of, who could not hear clearly God speaking to them. The service of the word begins with a song of entrance. This song marks the actual beginning of the divine service and the entrance of the pastor to the altar. The altar is the center and symbol of the Lord's presence among his people. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you do realize that throughout the history of the church, the pastor has always been identified by the altar in which he serves. There is no altar, there is no pastor. But as we have evolved in our understanding of what we think church is and what it's supposed to be, and we come in and try to do something for God and get up and stand up and sit down and bang our tambourines and all of this that we are doing from God, we walk further away from the altar. Well, I, I, I don't need communion. Mm, not right now. I don't need the forgiveness of sin. Uh, well, you know what? I... This week, just let me have that cracker and juice because I didn't have breakfast this morning. And we miss how God has come to be present with us. Remember, we, we, we talked about the sacrament, God's word attached to visible elements for the forgiveness of sin. Now, you didn't raise your hand, but I heard you laugh the same laugh I laughed. And how often you sin, where is the altar? The presence of the Lord. So if nothing else, if the screen were in a different place, as I continue to bore you right now, you would be staring square dead at the reality of the forgiveness of sin for you. Reminding you that there is no burden you carry that the cross could not handle.
there is where, there being the altar, is where the body and the blood of Jesus are distributed under the consecrated bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins. While an entrance hymn or psalm may be sung, a common beginning is to sing the introit. Dear friends, I want to pause with you for, for just a few more moments and talk to you about those visible elements. Simple water, simple bread, simple wine, simple grape juice. We might have a tendency to overlook that. But I want us to consider the power of God's grace coming to us in the simple things in life. that God has the ability to come to us in the bread and the wine, in the mundane things. See, we were too busy looking for filet mignon and mashed potatoes that we miss God in the bread and the wine. You told me I was going to be in a jacuzzi. How dare he come up in some simple bath water? And so then we miss God's grace and his mercy because we were expecting the fire and the earthquake when he came in the gentle whisper of bread and wine, reminding us that even in the simple things in life, I'm with you. Oh, can I slow this down just a few minutes more? And so we sit here in the chaos of our lives, wondering, God, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? And we miss him in the mundane things because we forgot to count how many times we just blinked. We forgot how many times our heart continues to pump. We miss him in the fact that you can hear me this morning. Ooh, and can breathe in the midst of this humidity because there are some folk, had you not cut on some air, they would still be at home praying that they got your YouTube channel because I cannot stand the heat and so therefore I cannot breathe. Ooh, don't miss God in the simple things of life. He's whispering to you right now that you can even feel your back hurt because there's no padding on the back of that pew just on your butt. And if you don't shut up and I can't stand up, my butt is going to hurt too. And so then I have another pain. But in those feelings, in those simple things, I experience God's grace and God's mercy. The introit, Latin for enter. The introit, one of the propers, the verses chosen are different each Sunday. We talked about the propers last week. It's sung by the congregation to the choir. The introit is a collection of passages from the Psalms that sets the tone for our worship and introduces the rest of the divine service in which Christ comes to us in his word and sacrament. And then the Kyrie, a shortened form of the Greek words, Kyrie eleison, which means, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon me. The Kyrie is the first prayer of the gathered congregation. It is a cry for mercy that our Lord and King hear us and help us in our needs and troubles. This prayer is encountered frequently in Scripture. For example, it is used by the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, 46 through 47, and the 10 lepers in Luke 17, 1 through 13. Beloved, as we start to focus in on what is worship and why we worship the way we worship, I want to impress upon you how what we do here is ripped right from the pages of scripture to comfort you as you go out into the battlefield of life and you run into the things that terrify your soul, the things that come to disconnect you, a way to kind of ingrain in you that you do have an anchor that will sustain you each and every day, that God has prepared this place to come meet you, to comfort you, and to tell you that you are his. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh. Wow. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Let your holy word fill me. And then we'll discuss the hymn of praise and I'll leave you alone for a few minutes and we'll pick up next week. Confident that the Lord is merciful, we join the whole church in singing the hymn of praise. In the traditional hymn of praise, the Gloria in Excelsis, the pastor begins with the angelic, <clears throat> good thing it's angelic and not my voice. Just want to note that. Hymn in Luke chapter 2 verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. And the glory of the church celebrates Christmas all year long. And we, along with the shepherds, are invited to go and see Jesus in the scripture readings that follows. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah, I, I know you just finished July and you got that saying, Christmas in July. Or, or you wait till December. But in the service, God is reminding you and me that he has come for us each and every day. You can celebrate the reality of Christmas 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As you embrace this as a reality, what a comfort to know that God has seen fit to set aside a place for you and for me to come meet him. What kind of world would we live in if we honestly believed and understood how awesome a reality that is? That there is a place that I can escape all of the foolishness that is my life. Do you think maybe that would work in Illinois? You want me to dial that a little closer to home? Maybe in Richton Park. You need a little closer than that. Should I go get the picture book and give you your address? Imagine what a comfort that would be as we shared that with the world. Now, as you experience that, we can now go back and talk about justification and sanctification. Now that I have understood that God has made me whole. Somebody does love little old me. I do have some value. I do have some worth. I have been restored. I have been filled with the goodness of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So now you want to talk about what kind of worship we would have and what's more attractive to people. Should I be in here with some type of banjo? Should I be in here with some drums, the bass guitar, the organ? I know this is going to rub some people the wrong way. Do you really care how the praise breaks out after you have been set free. As long as you point people to Jesus Christ. When do we get to the point that I may not like that song, but the person sitting next to me has been made whole and is singing to the top of their lungs. Praise be to God. Because next week I come in here, that person may not like that song, but you are getting your worship on. Thanks be to God. At what point do the children of God come together and understand that they have been made whole and all of our praise is going to break out in a variety of ways because all of us are a variety of people and you don't know the craziness I've been through so I might just sit here and cry and that's all the praise we gonna get I might jump and do some backflips but when I understand that Christmas is my reality all day long See, I don't know what your Christmas was like, but I used to look forward to Christmas. 
and I'm sorry I told my son this because now he has the expectation that this should happen for him as well. And I think I've shared this with you before, especially now that I'm in Illinois. Every Christmas, my brother and I used to get a pair. See, you thought I was going to tell you about Jesus. It is about Jesus, but we'll get there. Used to get a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes. I could not wait till December 25th to see what kind of, I, I mean, we had them all. I, it was exciting to me because that was a gift. Do you know that Jesus comes to you with a gift better than a pair of Michael Jordan tennis shoes? Each and every day, the salvation of your soul. Ooh, I'm ready to open that right now. And that's what the service is designed to remind you, that we have a gift in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to let you know that everything is okay and I will never leave you never forsake you. And you know what that's better than? A Michael Jordan comeback. Dear friends, may God's grace and his peace be with you each and every day as you receive God's grace and his mercies and the gifts he has set aside for each and every one of us. Amen.